Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. DCIS. It stands for ductal carcinoma in situ. It's when there are abnormal cells inside a milk duct in the breast. Now, DCIS is considered non-invasive, meaning that it hasn't spread outside the milk duct. And it's usually found on a mammogram that's done as part of breast cancer screening. But is it cancer? Does it turn into cancer? And can it be watched Watchful waiting. That's a tricky one to do. And what are, what are the treatment options? Joining us in studio is Mayo Clinic breast surgeon, Dr. Amy Degnam. Welcome to the program. Hello. I'm happy to be here with you. Thanks, Dr. Degnam. Um, it, it's a difficult subject and can be confusing for some women. So tell it's an acronym, DCIS. Tell us what those letters stand for. Right. So they stand for ductal carcinoma in situ, which means that these look like cancer cells, but they are not cancer cells that have the ability to spread outside of the milk ducts or invade anywhere else in the body. So therefore, they are not invasive cancer cells. So is that what in situ means? Correct. What, what, that it, it's just localized, in Correct. other words. Okay, but carcinoma means cancer. Yes. And it's in a milk duct. Correct. So there has been debate about the semantics of whether DCIS should be called cancer mm. or not, uh, because some people think that the word cancer should only be reserved for disease that can invade into other areas of the body. And so this is sort of in that intermediate zone between being completely benign and being an invasive cancer. Well, what if it's ductal and it goes into, for instance, the, inf I don't know, it, and it does spread, then it's not DCIS? Correct. Okay. Yes, if it can spread outside the milk ducts, invade into the surrounding breast tissue, or invade into lymph nodes, lymph nodes. then that is what defines invasive breast cancer. Yeah, and by definition, cancer means has the ability to spread or metastasize. At least back when I was in medical school, that's the way we defined it. So it tells us most of these women, uh, most of these cases are picked up on a mammogram. What do they look like on a mammogram? Most of the time, how this shows up on a mammogram is with little tiny calcium deposits or what we call calcifications. And um, when they occur in certain patterns or clusters, that's what raises concern. Not all calcifications are suspicious, but based on their appearance and pattern, that is what generates concern and then potentially a recommendation for a biopsy. So most of these women don't have symptoms, but some do. And if they do have symptoms, what are they? So it's only a small minority of women with DCS who present with symptoms, but it can be uh, a palpable mass. It can be some scaling or redness on the nipple. And those would be the two most common. Also, it would be possible to have some discharge from the nipple, which might be clear colored fluid or bloody fluid. What about the risk factors? Are they similar for DCIS as, the, as uh, uh, for regular cancer? They are. So the same factors that put women at risk for invasive cancer would put women at risk for DCIS. And that is, you know, increasing age, a family history of breast cancer, um, having early menarche or start of menstrual periods or late menopause, having a longer period of estrogen exposure, um, taking oral um, estrogens and progestins. So those are the, the same typical risk factors. And if you see in this abnormality on, on mammogram and it looks suspicious, how do you determine for sure what it is? So we have to get a, a piece of that tissue and look at it under the microscope, and that's what's called a biopsy, obtaining a piece of tissue for evaluation. Usually in the modern era, that's now done with a needle instead of going to surgery to get that tissue. So an, a needle biopsy, and um, if it's visible on a mammogram, then that is usually what is called a stereotactic needle biopsy, meaning that they use the mammograms to locate the calcifications and place the needle at the correct spot. What I haven't understood is if you have DCIS, that means it stays inside the milk duct. So if you could, re if you can remove that, it would make sense that you wouldn't need to have chemotherapy and the follow-up treatments. But that's not how patients are treated, correct? So the 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 standby, uh, or I should say, the standard treatment for DCIS is to excise it. Uh, you know, years ago, that was a mastectomy for everyone. Now we know that we can do less aggressive approaches. Uh, certainly lumpectomy with radiation is a solid approach. Uh, 
but some women may not need the radiation. Maybe a lumpectomy would be enough. And there is increasing interest worldwide in trying to reduce the aggressiveness of treatment for DCIS because maybe we're over-treating women with DCIS. And uh, so the, the current uh, tr clinical trials and approaches are looking at how can we reduce the treatment, find women that potentially don't need to have surgery at all, or women, if their uh, DCS has estrogen receptors, may be able to just get an anti-estrogen medication. And there are also some trials looking at doing nothing for DCS and just watching it. And if it progresses or looks like it's growing, then we would treat it at that point. That's watchful waiting. That is watchful waiting. And some people call it, but some people call it now active surveillance, which ah. means we're not doing nothing. We are keeping track of it and keeping an eye on it. I like that a lot better. That that phrase is a lot active better. Active surveillance. Yeah, yes. yeah. But doesn't uh, what treatment you choose, even if it's active surveillance, doesn't that depend on what the biopsy shows? It does, and that's an important fact, which is that uh, the characteristics of the DCIS matter in terms of what treatment is selected as well as whether or not women would potentially be eligible for one of these clinical trials doing something less aggressive. And that has a lot to do with two things. One, which is the size or the area of the DCS that we see in the breast. Is it a tiny spot or is this an extensive process? And that impacts the choices. Also, what is the grade of the DCS? How abnormal do these cells really look? The more abnormal they are, they're called higher grade DCIS. And looking at doing less aggressive treatments tends to be for the women who have low grade DCIS and smaller areas of DCIS. And would that also apply to postmenopausal women as opposed to younger women? Or does These that make trials a difference? generally are um, looking at women who are postmenopausal because in those women, almost all the time, the DCIS has estrogen receptors, and giving them an anti-estrogen medication would potentially treat the DCIS. Um, so you speak with the pathologist before you determine exactly what treatment they should have, correct? Right. Uh, and sometimes, can you convince some women that the pathologist says this barely looks like cancer, let's just watch it? Well, right now, we wouldn't generally do that outside of a clinical trial. We would say if we're, you know, the standard is to surgically excise the DCIS. If we're thinking of watching it, that would be reserved for a clinical trial or for potentially a patient who's not well enough to undergo an operation. All right, and another question regarding the biopsy. This is a needle biopsy. How can you always be sure that that's totally representative of the lesion? Are the lesions always homogeneous so that if you get a piece of it, you know that the whole thing is that? Or could you be missing a higher grade area and therefore suggest the wrong treatment? Usually the grade is fairly consistent and we get multiple pieces of the tissue even with a needle biopsy. Uh, we want to know that we have enough of a sample that it has evaluated uh, you know, the majority of what we're looking at on the mammogram. All right, ductal carcinoma in situ. It's considered the earliest form of breast cancer. There are multiple treatment options depending on the aggressiveness of the lesion and the size and a little bit with regard to whether the woman, woman is pre- or postmenopausal. And interestingly, clinical trials are studying new strategies for managing DCIS, such as close monitoring rather than surgery following diagnosis. All right, thanks to Mayo Clinic breast surgeon, Dr. Amy Degnam. Thanks for being here. Thank you.